Hello there, fellow summoners. Mad Dog HT here. We are going into our seventh um, war of the season for season 25. This is against Dark Dark Adventures. Um, these guys had a good, a good, pretty good defense. Um, a lot of rank threes. Um, first up, I'm going up Path Two, Node Five, which has the Strike Counter Fury. I'm going with Thing against this Domino. It's a rank three Domino. Well, she's not awakened, which is nice, so I don't have to worry about the crit fail damage. Um, and now my plan originally going into this fight was thinking I'll just redline it, ignore um, the strike counter fury stuff, let her build furies, and I should be able to trigger protection and stuff. Um, but after I got into it and seeing some of the block damage that I was taking, or once, the, I think it was once that unlucky came up, I was thinking, hmm, is that going, that's going to fail my abilities, and while I won't take crit fail damage, she will basically be able to bypass, um, my protection, and so after that, it was kind of a little bit late. I mean, she has 11 furies, um, and I think you'll see I'll take some damage here and there. Um, and then when she does cross her special, don't, I do have to be super careful about her evading. Um, and so it is a, it's a little tricky placement. If she was awakened, it would be a lot better um, as far as uh, defensive tactic. Um, you see there, like, my protection was not triggering and she was hitting hard into my block and took off a significant chunk of damage so after I saw that I'm just like okay I need to be very aggressive throw off my specials um, and hopefully I can manage um, my combo a little bit better um, but I will finish out this fight no problem um, but yeah, this, this fight could be problematic. Because um, I can just see, like, her filling a power bar, which is going to give you your power bar. You have to throw a special. She goes lucky. You go unlucky. She evades. She's throwing specials. You know, it, can, it, it could get messy. But um, Thing does take this domino down. Again, if I would have done it cleaner, I would have started and just been throwing specials um, more quickly um, at the beginning. But next up, we have node 14. Again, this has Strike Counter Fury um, with the Brute Force, Power Focus 1. It has a Corvus. Uh, I'm still boosted. I probably should have healed, um, but I just know that, like, you can't take damage um, once you get your protection up. So you'll see, like, I'll take a little bit of chip damage at the beginning. Um, and so long as I'm being pretty proactive with um, throwing my combos, keeping the brute force off, um, since it's power focus one, it's really, really hard to get him to even a special two. Um, a special three is pretty much out of the question. Um, and you see now I'm triggering protection. He's got a bunch of furies on him. And it's kind of dancing around there a little bit because I, I just... I don't know the spacing and the timing of what of that just didn't just didn't go too well to where I felt like I was gonna get a parry off. Um, definitely want to get the parries off so you can build up max rock stacks, trigger that protection, and basically take no damage. So right now I'm just redlining it, um, and you know besides that short stint of where I was um, taking some brute force damage, everything's been going good. Now I do get a big enough hit to trigger this indestructible and I forgot to mention this war um, it is not a um, war with the normal protect <coughs> tactic I do take a hit there um, this is the one with the, the metal yeah so it's bulwark um, I've we've never really encountered this in a long long time so it was kind of interesting. So I do trigger that indestructible there that one time. I just kind of ignored it and just kept going on with the fight. Um, I wasn't going to do any damage. Um, in order to take it off, um, you basically have to be a metal defender and put a debuff on them, um, which basically isn't going to happen because um, thing isn't metal. 
Um, but here, I thought I was going to kill him with my special three, and it did not. And so this could have been disastrous. Luckily, he did get pushed to a special two, which is easy to evade and get out of the way from. And then I hit him. But I literally almost put down my phone because I thought that special three was going to kill him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um... We're going up against node 20. The next one is a Omega Red, which I thought was an interesting placement. So I brought Guillotine 2099 for three fights, and it was this Omega, and then I have an Invisible Woman and a Havoc. Now I could have used um, could have used Warlock, but the main reason why I didn't bring Warlock was well, there's two reasons. My Guillotine is at rank three. And it was because of this Omega. With the Strike Counter Fury, I'm going to have to throw in some heavies. And even though I'm a robot, um, the spores, um, they build up slowly. I just didn't want to have to be throwing off bleeds um, on the Omega. Heal him up a little bit with his willpower healing and whatnot. And be getting the, the death field activated. Um, so, yeah. So I bring in Guillotine 2099. So basically... You can see my rhythm here is to do a heavy and then do a uh, medium light light and then parry medium light medium light special one and i'm gonna be slowly I get tagged there i'm gonna be slowly gaining enough power to almost get to a special two um here we bait off the special one and then we just kind of go back at it so again Reset Strike Counter Fury, get a heavy, and then parry, medium light, light, parry, medium light, parry, medium light, special. Um, now, I was thinking towards the end, I'm like, I really would like to get Guillotine charged, but in order to do that, um, I am going to have to get some extra Furies on this guy. Um, and basically, I started too late. And I get, I get close to getting to three bars, but I end up killing him. Um, and I didn't want to mess around with just kind of stalling and taking blocks because of the strike counter fury, building up furies and whatnot. Um, so I just get out of the fight. I don't, I don't get guillotine 2099 charged. Um, definitely could have done it. Um, but again, I just started a little bit too late. I got into Assassin's range and I was doing too much damage. So here we go. Um, those degens ticked off for way, way, way too much. And I'm like, up oh, there's another degen. So I just finished them off with an L2. I wasn't going to mess around and get any more chip damage. But Omega Red goes down. Um, and we get that first, uh, set of fights in section one cleared. No problems, no deaths. Now, normally I would probably take this um, long shot um, on the power snack, but this time around um, I had Turtle take that with um, his boy. Did a great job, like lost no health, shot him down. So now this is getting towards the very, very end of the war, so I'm boosting up big time. This is a pretty close war. Um, we pretty much had it in the bag, but I didn't want to make any stupid mistakes and, and die. Now here's the thing with this um, node 27 um, she's got 100% additional ability ability accuracy and her ability is and there you're see, I, I messed up is that it's like a 40 65% chance that when you hit her um, while she's invisible that she can put a exhaust buff debuff on you and so with a hundred percent addition to that's so over a hundred percent so basically every time I touch her while um, she has her shield up I'm gonna get an exhaustion debuff and so as long as I don't get three or more um, I should be fine so basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a heavy knockdown and then just parrying it um, and um, I get tagged trying to get the invisible off we do and then I'm just gonna go to ha go ham go to town while the invisibility is out now this is guillotine 2099 is definitely not the most ideal option for this fight because it's slow 
um, you do have to hit those parries you have to stall you know depending on how the AI is reacting um, it can get problematic quick and you can see like I, I threw off that heavy earlier on where I already had one exhaustion debuff on me and I threw it and I hit her and I gave her, her the second one and then she went invisible and put that vulnerability debuff on me so it got three and so she went unblockable there she had two um, so yeah if you basically do two hits um, she can go with a knockdown she can go invisible or whatnot and put the inv in vulnerability on and then yeah she's gonna be unblockable so um, yeah anyways I, I am super boosted I dueled this two or three times to kind of practice just the stall method and yet yeah, it, it worked um, just definitely not recommended but it kind of just how we worked out past this is this is what I ended up with and we get her to 5% range throw off the L3 and we kill her so we did take some chip damage I did take a hit or two um, but nothing too crazy and so I do have gu guillotine 2099 charge now the problem that I didn't consider and I actually wish I in hindsight I wish I didn't charge her up on this fight because I thought that it would help me with this havoc and it kind of did but it's kind of a catch-22 where it helped make the fight go quicker but at the same time it also hurt so I took this fight in the off season with a uncharged guillotine 2099 and I got a havoc down without him putting one single plasma on me and you can see already I already had three, now I'm at six. He's fully unblockable. And I'm like, crap. And I did not consider that her um, pre fight with carrying over the 100 combo would, um, those energy attacks would actually feed the plasmas. And now he's being super, super dang passive. So I get the armor break on, so I don't have an armor up. And I need. To get an armor up otherwise we start getting detonated like crazy so there we get the armor up but he's still unblockable so i can't like it's you know i get an intercept in but i do get detonated because i didn't have the armor up while that went down um yeah it's just just ugly there we beta heavy hit him one more time oh, basically killed him but i, I ended up um, carrying over the combo with another L3 but it got sketchy there one detonation it could have got out of hand with the fully unblockable those plasmas the armor breaks we do get we do take the hit down the havoc I was I was super boosted um, and then last fight um, there's like two hours on the clock and we go up to what is left is a doom boss rank 3 is only sick like 50 I put on my pre fight we had some mr. fantastic pre fights we had a white magneto pre-fight. I'm swapping out my tech boost that I had on there for science. I have a power start one, and the basic, basically, the reason for the power start one is it just provides a way to easily knock um, Doom down while I have that petrify debuff up from the Mr. Fantastic um, synergy or synergy the the pre-fight um, from one of my from one of my buddies in the group. Um, Sheen, thank you, um, makes this fight a lot easier because he can throw an L1 and with that um, Petrify up, I, he won't trigger Hazarath so I can immediately counter, don't have to worry about getting shocked. Um, so here I throw another L1, we get him knocked down, and yeah, so we've refreshed that Petrify three times now, and he's over halfway done, doing really, really well. I kind of backed up. I probably should have gone for the full combo and pushed him to L2. Um, I'm just more comfortable fully evading the L1 versus the L2. Sometimes I mess up. Um, so now I don't have the Petrify on. So next time he throws a special one, um, he gets the Hazarath. And then I just do a little dance back and forth, back and forth. And then once it falls off, then I'm gonna block, try to block bait his heavy, and then go into a combo and medium light mediums. That one did a full combo. 
Um, and there, I, I thought I was trying to dex out of that um, block baiting. I did get tagged, throw off an L2, but I get the solo. So uh, a little hit there, but overall it went clean. Pretty easy fight to do with Torch, especially when you have those Petrifies on. Um, our battle group did great. We had under 10 deaths for the whole alliance, two deaths in our battle group. We did win this war. It was a it was a solid war. Um, and yeah, um, so we did win. I had six fights, six kills, no deaths. I had 48 kills on the season on 48 fights, one death, which was a timeout. Um, still upset about that one. Um, we did go up six spots um, in the rankings in pl to Platinum 1, um, number 14. And we're 5-2 and two on the season, so we start a win off for the second half of the season, which is a good start. We need to, we need to get some more wins because we're still in Tier 2. If we're, if we're even going to consider possibly even reaching Masters, we have to get some Tier 1 wars, which we've had zero. Um, so yeah, not looking great, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, Dark Avengers, good war again. Um, it was a really competitive war. And yeah, so you can see here that we did go up to um, 14 in Platinum 1. And yeah, so that's where we're at. Thanks for watching, fellas, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.